All right, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm glad to present to you today, um, all the way from big old New York City, the internet librarian for Tumblr, uh, Amanda Brennan, who's gonna be here today talking about memes and uh, all those kind of cool things that we talk about in the digital humanities as part of our Bregman Digital Humanities Lecture. Uh, she's our special guest here today. Uh, so please join me in a very warm Potsdam welcome. Round of applause for Amanda Brennan. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, just to give you a little background on myself, uh, I got my MLIS, which is a library and science degree, from Rutgers in 2011. And following that, I worked at the website Know Your Meme. Are you guys familiar with that at all? Yeah, yeah uh, so we archived the history of internet memes and internet culture. My specialty was fandoms and subcultures on the internet, so all the, the weird niche things you see, that's, that's my favorite thing on the internet. <laughs> um, I also specialized in hashtags and the way language has changed online. Uh, in 2013, I joined Tumblr as a community and content associate my fancy name. Um, but there I work with uh, trending tags and trending blogs. So I surface uh, original content that people haven't seen and put in your faces. So uh, if you use the mobile app, there's like a little magnifying glass. It's like, here's what's trending on Tumblr. Uh, that's curated by my team. And we also do the year in review. So if you've ever, if you've seen the Tumblr year in review, uh, I curate all the list of the most reblogged topics. So my library science degree has lended me um, the ability to do lots of data mining. And that's like the most fun part, making these lists. Uh, we also launched something recently called the Fandom Metrics. Uh, have you guys seen that at all? It's really cool. It's at thefandommetrics.tumblr.com. And every week we track the top, 20, uh, ca the top 20 terms in six different entertainment categories. So the top 20 TV shows, movies, music, celebrities, video games, and internet celebrities. And every week we post that up on Monday, and you could see like, oh, My Chemical Romance jumped nine spots this week. Um, so <laughs> people get really excited. They're like, oh my god, let's reblog everything about Fall Out Boy. Um, that's a really cool way to see what's happening in the greater sphere of Tumblr other than just what's trending right now, right this second. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about that. <laughs> um, I'm a little under the weather, so if you can't hear me or if I'm coughing, I apologize. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today is a history of memes. Um, just because meme culture is really interesting and a lot of people when they see a meme they're like, oh, it's a picture with words on it. It's totally not. Uh, so what, when you think of a meme, what do you guys think of? Anyone? <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? A type of meme, if you will? Yeah. Oh, the crazy ice girlfriend. All right. Advice animals. Advice animals, yeah, there's a type. Um, anyone else, anyone over there? Yeah, so good. <laughs> um, if you notice a trend, you're all naming pictures with words on it. <laughs> um, what I'm here to really drill home today is that memes are so much more than that. Um, this is a Google search I did last week, uh, just seeing what comes up on Google when you type in memes are. Uh, it's pretty negative. <laughs> memes are stupid, memes are dead, memes are bad. Um, but this typing in something into a Google search to see what comes up, that's a meme. Surprise, you've just been memed on. <laughs> um, so these are some examples of memes. Uh, this one's a hashtag, and I'm sure anyone, do you guys use Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure you guys have participated in a hashtag meme or two. Uh, this one was trending when I was making the slides. Change a word, ruin a quote. <laughs> So this person uh, wrote, be the strange you want to see in the world, instead of the change. <laughs> kind of silly. But these are really good because they're low uh, entry um, barriers, so anyone can see a hashtag trending on their screen when they log in and be like, oh, I can think of something funny for this. You just participated in a meme. Congratulations. Uh, this next one, it might be a little hard to read, but uh, this is a Tumblr text meme that's been really popular. It's uh, changing the meanings of zodiac signs. So uh, someone name a zodiac sign that they are. Sagittarius. Whoa, so many. Yeah, yeah. Let's start with Pisces. Uh, if you were a kitchen utensil Pisces, you would be a pizza slicer. Uh, Sagittarius, you would be a slotted spoon. 
And <laughs> these things aren't rooted in anything astrological or even anything factual. They're just like, what are 12 uh, funny Christian utensils I could think of? Let me arbitrarily assign it to something. Uh, this next meme, does anyone recognize this? Uh, this is an example of a YouTube meme. It's the Harlem Shake. <laughs> Uh, so Filthy Frank uploaded this video of them just dancing to this song, and everyone was like, you know what, this is a great idea. I am going to do that too. And like sports teams were doing it, coworkers at work were doing it. I think every website on the internet except Know Your Meme did it. <laughs> um, but there was a point when this was really popular, that, like hundreds of thousands of videos were being uploaded to YouTube every day with Harlem Shake in the title. Uh, this next one is a little more obscure. Uh, the image is just kind of silly, but shipping. Any of you guys in a fan fiction? My people. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> shipping is the act of taking two characters or real people or whoever you are, even if it's like inanimate objects, and deciding, you know what, they're in love. I want them to be in love. <laughs> and uh, that's the act of idealizing them in a relationship uh, it's seen a lot online in image macros with ships or with FedEx boxes, like, man, I ship this. <laughs> I'm going to put it in a box and send it far away. Uh, this one's my favorite. Emoticons and emoji, totally memes. Uh, this one is the shrug guy. It's like, oh, what do you think about this thing? Shrug guy. Uh, and this image was made by animated text, which is, have you guys ever seen animated text at tumblr.com? They are one of the best blogs on the internet. All they do is they take weird sentences or emoji or just weird words and animate them in colorful GIFs. <laughs> it's a good time waster, highly recommend. So uh, memes started way before the internet too. Um, <coughs> I don't think I ever gave the uh, official definition of a meme. I'm gonna back up a second. So memes are a concept. Uh, it's the concept that travels from person to person and evolves along the way. That was my big selling point on that first slide and I totally forgot. Cold medicine, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so memes aren't just on the internet. This first example, Kilroy was here. Uh, it originated in World War II era and its origins are a little shaky. No one really knows where it came from, but people associate it with GIs that would come into an area and they'd like storm the beach and then draw this Kilroy was here and be like, yeah, we were here, we did this thing. Um, and it just kind of took off and it still is around. Sometimes I see these in New York and I'm like, who are you? This is like old meme. Um, <laughs> this next one um, is Andre the Giant. And this image was created by Shepard Ferry in 1989. He, uh, this artist later went on to make those Obama change posters that were really viral uh, when he ran for president. But he took this image of Andre the Giant, a pro wrestler, and just wrote, like, he has a posse, stuck tens of thousands of them around the US. He sent them out to people, and people posted them up in their neighborhoods. And then, uh, this is early 1990s, he got sued for uh, likeness copyright. And um, this image went on to become the Obey poster. You guys are familiar with Obey, right? Yeah, so um, that's the perfect way to show how a meme evolves over time. So it started out like this and ended up as Obey, that weird face, same face, just a little, uh, a little more factorized. So let's start in 1991. In 1991, at the uh, University of Cambridge, people in the computer lab were really lazy. <laughs> and they were like, you know what? It would be really great if I knew when there was coffee in the coffee pot so I didn't have to walk all the way to the coffee pot to get coffee. So these computer programmers set up a camera uh, that took a picture every couple of seconds to show the status of the coffee pot. And this is the Trojan Room coffee pot. It was the world's first webcam. And uh, people from not from Cambridge started watching it because they're like, wow, this is a coffee pot I can look at online. Like, what is this time waster? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it just became this thing. Like, people were like, whoa, I can set up a camera and look at things. And it's just this really weird community around this coffee pot. In 2001, they finally took the webcam down. 
Uh, you know, internet had evolved by then, and no one wanted to really look at it. They sold them on eBay. And they sold it to, uh, hold on, sorry, I gotta read my notes. Uh, Spiegel magazine in Germany for 3,350 pounds. <laughs> And Spiegel then continued the, uh, the heritage of having a crop, uh, the coffee pot on webcam until they closed that uh, about a couple years later. So this weird coffee pot started, started the wide world of webcams. <coughs> so uh, 1996, can't play the video yet. It's not 12.15. <laughs> um, a few more minutes till we get to videos. But um, 1996, The Dancing Baby came out. You guys are familiar with it? Do I need to? Oh, man. I want to play. Do you think it's okay? No. They told us we couldn't have audio until 12.15. We well, so. have their audio now, so. Yeah, I know. Well, I can't. Oh, no. I, I don't like, I don't want to make that woman angry at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to play the Rick Roll. That's more important than Dancing Baby. But it goes. Can you do the song? No. No? <laughs> so basically, it's just a CGI dancing baby to the sound of Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, right. Hooked out a feeling. <laughs> um, this was really big. It was one of those things that like your mom would get an email and have to download it. It'd be like, oh, this is funny. Let me forward it to all the other moms. Um, and it got so big, it was on an episode of Ally McBeal. You guys know that show? It's like really old reference. OK, I'm glad someone gets it. I, was, I have a coworker who's a sophomore in college, and he was like, what's Ali McBeal? I'm like, oh, I need to teach you about TV. Um, do you guys know this one? Anyone? All right, so this is 1998. An art student named Deidre LeCarte had a competition with her roommate, and she was like, you know what, this internet thing is cool. Let's have a challenge to see who can make the website that more people look at. And Deirdre, she had a pet hamster named Hampton. And she's like, I love my hamster. I'm going to make a website dedicated to it. So she got 360-something sprites of hamsters dancing and uh, put it to the tune of Whistle Stop by Roger Miller, which is just like this weird whistle like pattern sound, and put it up on GeoCities for free. It was like, all right, cool. Let's, let's see what happens. And it became this weird phenomenon. Like, it was another one of those things that everyone emailed to each other. There's no social networks back at this time. Um, people would email and be like, yo, look at these dancing hamsters. Like, it's, again, like the coffee pot. It's this weird stuff on the internet that you're like, man, someone else has to see how weird this is. And uh, it became such a phenomenon. Hamsterdance.com still exists. And it's, it was bought out by some like CGI company. And all the hamsters are CGI now. And you could buy hamster CDs of hamster music. It's really bizarre the way that old memes have really, like back then when people were like, yeah, let's buy into this meme. They were like, let's totally change it and make it something new. Um, so hamster dance in the original, no longer found on the internet. But you can find somewhere in CGI hamsters. The URL. So the late 90s, uh, people started using their, um, these free website hosts to kind of give a speaker box or a soapbox to their personality. And a lot of the ones that went viral were really weird. Um, it wasn't just like, oh, this person's cool for doing things. It's like, wow, this person did a weird thing. Let me share this with everyone. Um, audio. Oh, it's 12.15. Great. <laughs> if not, I know that one by heart. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Um. Where's my mouse? Oh, no. Mouse. Okay. So uh, the sixth grader named Michael Blount was like, I'm going to make a website for myself on not GeoCities. His was on Tripod. Anyone ever use Tripod? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those were dark times. Um, <laughs> So he put this audio clip up on his website. Hello, my future girlfriend. This is what I sound like. I am 11 years old in the sixth grade in New Mexico. Please pay me if I'm on the drop of check. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's 
Unbelievable. When people signed off of AOL Instant Messenger, I had it by. Thanks for stopping by. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> ancient internet right there. So this website went viral. Uh, he never ended up. He never ended up getting a girlfriend from the website. But in 2010, he came back and like Gawker or BuzzFeed or something found him, and he made an homage video called Hello My Future Boyfriend, because he had since come out as gay. <laughs> and um, he redid the whole thing, and he was like, I am 20 whatever now, and I still live in New Mexico. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. It was really cute. And um, he was surprisingly cool about his meme in the future, which does not always happen. So this next one, um, this one was on zoom.com. It's like getting real obscure here with the free web hosting. Uh, his name was Mahir Kagri. I could be killing that pronunciation, I'm sorry. Um, but he put up this website with lots of photos of him, him playing ping pong and him being real cool. And he just, again, wanted to find a girlfriend. He wrote, you know, welcome to my homepage, I kiss you, kisses to all my ladies. And this is the first example of a dating profile. Um, like way before OkCupid, okay way before Tinder, like <laughs> this guy just built a website for himself and was like, I'm going to find a girlfriend. Again, no one knows if he actually did find a girlfriend, um, but his photos went really viral. People were sharing them and being like, look at this guy. Like, I'm going to make a website like that too. And he's probably the origin of OkCupid. This next one, I apologize for anyone who hasn't seen this before. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with Goatsy? Yeah, please don't Google it if you're not. Like, I don't want to be the person that introduces Goatsy into your life. Um, <laughs> but this guy uh, took a really awful photo of himself and put it on the internet. But uh, you're a domain name for it, and it was just this photo of him, him doing a thing. And um, <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. He's bent over with his hands and his butt. Uh, holding it open. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it's, don't Google it, please don't Google it. <laughs> um, but th this time was also, while we had like the innocent fun of these dating profiles, we also had a big increase in shock images. So uh, there was a website called Style Project that was really big at the time where people would just share these disgusting photos and uh, grow, what, was it gross stuff? Rotten.com. I just look at you like you know, and you like mentally sent it to me. <laughs> um, but stuff like that was really big. So not only were people trying to get girlfriends, they were trying to like outgross each other. And that's the actual guy who did the butt thing. Um, Gawker, Gawker had a really great piece where they tracked him down in like Russia and interviewed him. And he's like, I'm just like putting things in my butt. <laughs> uh, so 2000 was really the era of flash animation. Uh, this was around the time of Newgrounds. You guys ever heard of Newgrounds? The Bounds World? Yeah. Do they still exist? Do you guys still use them? No? Newgrounds is still, yeah, I know it's still around, but I don't know if people go to them. I, I go to it like once a year. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just check in, see what's going on. Um, but this is also the time of Homestar Runner. You guys know Homestar? Homestar yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so fun. Homestar recently just uh, came back and started making videos again. It was like, blast from the past. What's the 129? This is Strong Bad. He would answer emails. So this like silly flash animation about how to draw a dragon, which clearly that doesn't look very much like a dragon, uh, this introduced Trogdor the Burninator to the world. And uh, like really obscure, weird 2000 uh, meme eventually ended up in 2006's Guitar Hero, <laughs> where you could play Trogdor's theme song. Um, so it was, it's just Homestar, even though it was an old, old thing. It still comes back. It's still this piece of nostalgia for people your age and older who are just like, yeah, I remember watching those videos in my room. Oh, man, there's supposed to be animations on this. Oh, well. Uh, another one of these Newgrounds animations is peanut butter jelly time. Come on. Thing. <laughs> it's just a 
Ben Sindolana. Um, but this like was super viral. It's like everyone's going to the Flash animation portal to watch a dancing banana to a peanut butter song. Um, recently on Tumblr, I think it was Skippy or just some peanut butter brand made an image macro based on peanut butter jelly, and we were we were all just like, who signed off on this creative? Like, where is this coming from? Um, and just keep it. Ah, so many things. No. It went too far. Spoiler alert. Um, so this is another guy who set up his own personal website. This one, I think, was on GeoCities. Yeah, this one was GeoCities. Uh, this is a Danish kid who called himself Jellyman. And he, <laughs> he covered a song by a group called Ozone, I think. Sorry, just double checking. Yeah, the song is called Outlandish. And it's a Danish song about the love of his life. And this kid uploaded it to his personal website. <laughs> Real 2002 video editing here. on his website for download, because remember, we're in a time before YouTube. And people were downloading this and then making their own, like, I'm going to do the dance, I'm going to add in She Moves How, and all of this weird video editing. And it just, it was not as big as some of the other memes that we've talked about so far, but, like, I personally love it, because it's just, like, um, the first video where people are like, yeah, I'm going to recreate this dance and do it. And um, it just brings a smile to my heart. This, this one's kind of sad. Um, <laughs> kind of. Kind of. <laughs> so this is Star Wars kid. So this was filmed um, in November 2002. Uh, the kid is Gislein Raza. And he just found this pole and he's like, you know, I really want to be Darth Maul. And then I just record myself, you know, take the tape home, no one's going to see it. It's just for my personal collection. And he forgot to take the tape. So in April 2003, some kids at his school were like, wow, this is a gold mine. And they put the video up on Kazaa. Do you guys know Kazaa? Like, yeah. blast from the past right there. Um, and hundreds of thousands of people downloaded it. They were like, wow. This kid is hilarious. Like, <laughs> look at these great moves he has. Um, Gislaine did not feel the same way about this. He was, he's so embarrassed to the point he almost killed himself. He had to drop out of high school. Um, kids were making fun of him. He kind of disappeared from everything for a while. His parents filed a quarter of a million dollar lawsuit against the two kids that put it up in Kaza. Um, I couldn't find whether or not they won. All I know is that the lawsuit existed. Um, but in 2010, uh, Raza came out and was like, you know, um, I, he spoke out against cyberbullying. And he was like, this happened to me. This was a thing before cyberbullying was a word. And um, he ended up going to law school and working in his local community. Um, so he's, he like made it through, <laughs> sort of. Um, it's a kind of a sad story, but he has a happy ending. He's out there for the kids who have been there and who are getting cyberbullied now. So
So while all this video stuff was happening, we had three really big websites that were kind of forming internet culture. The first one is YTMND. You guys heard of it? No? Oh, man. YTMND stands for You're the Man Now Dog, which is a quote from Finding Forrester. Uh, what's his name? Sean Connery. Sean Connery, sorry. Um, so Sean Connery in this movie is teaching a young group of students to write poetry, and then one writes a successful poem, and he goes, yes. Can you do a voice, John? You're the man, man now, John. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy was like, this is hilarious. I'm going to make a looping bit of sound of this quote and put it over a picture of Sean Connery pointing at something. And it launched a whole website of images paired with looping sound. In some ways, this is a big precursor to Vine, in my, my opinion, I don't know. <laughs> um, but it was this idea of a very short piece of content with a looping sound. One of the most famous YTMNDs is uh, a little time travel ad. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. Like, I need someone to go back in time with me. Bring your own weapons. Safety not guaranteed. You guys ever yeah. see this? Yeah. yeah. What's the song? Do you remember the song? Uh, some 80s thing. Yeah, it's some 80s song about time travel, and um, it became so popular that this guy, to the to this day, still gets letters in his PO box, and it was just some uh, magazine. It was Backwoods magazine. Just they sell like camping gear, and um, he was an editor, and they had some space to fill, so he made this ad. He just thought it would be a joke, but he still gets mail asking people like, "Where can I come meet you for the time travel?" I want to time travel back in, like, back 20 years so I can undo this murder. <laughs> um, there's a podcast called Reply All, and they just did a really great episode on uh, Safety Not Guaranteed. Um, I think it was the most recent episode. I'd highly recommend listening to it. Um, but they also made a movie about it starring Aubrey Plaza. It's called Safety Not Guaranteed. It's on Netflix. Really good watch. Aubrey Plaza's the best. <coughs> uh, Four Chan. You guys know 4chan, right? Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> so 4chan launched. Um, it was an image board, so you reply with images instead of messages. And it was based on a Japanese board of the same form called 2chan, which is based on 2channel. So everything is based on something else. So um, 4chan has boards for everything. The most common one that people know is B, which is random, which is like all of the terrible things on the internet. <laughs> and all of like, Oh, so many memes have started from B. I've got a slide just on B memes coming up. <laughs> but um, there's also stuff on 4chan like lit and cooking and guns and um, mm. <laughs> all the porn you can think of. <laughs> um, everything on 4chan is pretty much porn. The <laughs> uh, last one I wanted to talk about is LiveJournal. Did you guys ever use LiveJournal at all? Good, some people. Um, it was all the rage back in the early 2000s before a Russian company bought it and people stopped using it for some reason. Um, but LiveJournal was the first place that you could really blog and have a community of other bloggers with you. And they also hosted communities. So you could join um, based on your interests. And there was something for everyone. Like, I remember being 15 and loving Jersey Emo, where they posted all the emo shows. And um, this was also the rise of the scene kid. So <laughs> there were communities like Non Uglies and Mad Rad Hair where people would post their photos and ask for rates and uh, kind of built this culture of what's cool in the whole world. So it wasn't based on what's cool where you live. It's like, oh, I've got to compete with these generic kids now. Um, and some of them still exist. One of the biggest live journal communities that still exist is, uh, oh, no, they didn't. And it's a gossip site. Uh, every gossip that's new and breaking is up on, oh no, they didn't. And there's still thousands of commenters every day. All right, 2004, the internet becomes news. <laughs> this is one of my favorite videos of all time. Gary Brolsma, he, he, hail, he hails from New Jersey, just like me. And um, this is a cover of 
I'm gonna kill this pronunciation. Dragoste Dinte by the Mold Moldovan band Ozone. Not to be confused with the uh, 19 or 2004 band. And he just put this up on the internet. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna lip sync this. It's gonna be great. Uh, kind of like Jelly Man. <laughs> but I'm like Jelly Man. <laughs> Uh, he got more of a backlash like Star Wars kid and people started making fun of him and yeah it did become this meme where people uh, made their own Numa Numa videos but this was a front page story in the New York Times in the regional section not real front page um, but it was about how he was being harassed on the internet for making his video so it's when you know it's serious and the New York Times starts writing about me so 2005, YouTube comes out. <laughs> These are some of my favorite YouTube videos I'm gonna share with you. <laughs> this first one is at 225. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the first like viral local news stories. Uh, this is just some kid reporting on sports and he was so nervous. The whole video, he's like freaking out and uh, he coined the term, boom goes the dynamite, which went on to become a meme. And um, <coughs> local news stories on YouTube still are incredibly important to uh, internet culture. Um, Antoine Dodson, Sweet Brown of Ain't Nobody's Got Time For That. Um, the guy when the people got freed in Cleveland, I can't remember his name. Do you remember his name? I forget his name, but yeah. I um, And it, uh, it's such a hallmark of what goes viral on the internet that in The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt on Netflix, their intro is an auto-tune local news story, which is done by the Gregory Brothers, who did all of the other auto-tune uh, local news, which I thought was just such a great nod to internet. <laughs> this next one, so good. I hope you guys have seen this before. of how YouTube really can give a new life to something that would normally have never been seen by a public audience. Like this is, this was uploaded 10 years after it happened. And some kid's like, man, remember this, this weird thing I did? Let me put it on the internet and everyone loved it. They're like, man, I had those feelings. I know what that's like. I identify with this video. And so many like old videos and photos go viral um, just for that piece of nostalgia where uh, someone's like, yeah, I had that in my childhood. I identify with it. Uh, I am going to share this with other people who identify. And the last one, the best video. No. <laughs> Spoilers. The best video of them all. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, exactly. <laughs> So in 1987 was when this song came out. No, it was one of those one one hit wonders, just on the radio. Uh, 4chan users used this video as a bait and switch. So they would be like, hey, here's the trailer for Half-Life 3, click this link. And you click it and it would be this song. Uh, this came to be known as the Rick Roll. And Sorry to stop it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can keep singing, feel free. Um, but in 2008, 2008 was a big year for the Rickroll, um, it became so ubiquitous, ubiquitous that YouTube for April Fools changed all of their videos to the Rickroll. So anything you wanted to watch, it'd be like, oh, you're getting a Rickroll, sorry. <laughs> and um, this the best YouTube April Fools. This is the best day of my life. Um, and later that year in November, they invited Rick Astley to perform this song at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> so, you know, this was 21 years after the song was released. The internet just gave it this new life 
that he performed it in the middle, in the middle of Herald Square with dancers. It was very absurd, um, <laughs> but it's the power of 4chan. It even revitalized his career a little bit. Yeah, I think he released a new album. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so while we were talking about YouTube, 2006 happened. I don't know if you noticed. Um, <laughs> so this is an example of a lolcat. I'm sure you all are familiar with the lolcats. Uh, this started on 4chan where people, because people post pretty gross stuff on 4chan. So in effort to combat the gross stuff, people would post cats. And they developed this language of the cats, of I can has, and uh, like, I gave you this cookie, or I made you this cookie, but I eated it. Like, the cats have terrible grammar. <laughs> but that is just how the language of the wall cat works. So 4chan introduced this new language into the internet and gave cats the weirdest personality and kind of made them the kings of the internet. Also in 2006, you guys probably have figured this out, um, it, the rules of the internet uh, started appearing on 4chan. While there is no like confirmed, like here's a site you go to look at the rules of the internet, it's this folklore that spreads from person to person. And perfectly perfect example of a meme because as they spread, people add new rules all the time. So this is an example of rule 34. If it exists, there is porn of it. Uh, some of my other favorite rules, I wrote them down. Um, rule 63, every fictional character has an opposite gender counterpart on the internet. Um, rule, rule 10 is that there's no real rules at all. <laughs> uh, rule 30, girls do not exist on the internet. It's 100% true. Um, rule 32 is to lurk more. So if you don't know what something is, you don't ask, you just keep lurking and looking until you find it out yourself. And uh, rule 39, my personal favorite, caps lock is cruise control for cool. <laughs> so anytime you need to be cool, man, caps lock. <laughs> this next one, um, I hear some laughter. Are you guys familiar? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, so this is an example of how 4chan conducted raids online. Um, they still do this. They try to DDoS Tumblr all the time. Um, but this is a Habo Hotel. You guys ever used it? Yeah. It's a virtual avatar system. So you sign up, you get a hotel room, you get to like spend real money on avatar clothes, and you can go through the hotel. And in this one, a bunch of 4chaners gathered together. They all bought the same avatar with a suit and an afro. And they all just stood in front of the pool and spammed pools closed, pools closed, pools closed. <laughs> and lots of people got banned, lots of people just got angry. But these types of raids were just kind of like nonsense. Like, it's, it's a picture of a pool. <laughs> like, we're just going to stand here and say it's closed. Like, it, this is very absurd, and it's silly that you get mad. But um, these are the types of things that 4chan does. It's just like, let's do a thing for the lulls. Let's just do it to see what happens. In 2008, they brought this idea of a raid into real life. So uh, January of that year was uh, when a Scientology promotional video starring Tom Cruise was leaked. And it was just him like spouting nonsense about um, Scientology and how great it was. And uh, 4chan users probably were the people that leaked it. They got uh, takedown notices from Scientology. and. Uh, in response to having the videos taken down, a uh, 4chan user made this communique. Hello, leaders of Scientology. We are anonymous. Over the years, we have been watching you, your campaigns of misinformation, your suppression of dissent, your litigious nature. All of these things have caught our eye with the leakage of your latest propaganda video into mainstream circulation. 